Hello! Today I'll show you my new tool for milling machine, rotary table. Many times I need to cut some radius or to divide something. I see the tool for that kind of job once, but didn't know anything about. So after a few days of internet searching and reading I go to eBay and buy one of them. Start with lower price and then fast rise my limit. So in the end I bought 125mm or 5 inch Soba rotary table, complete with dividing plate for jaw chuck and tail stock. It cost more than mine mini late. I hope it work well. Ok, let's unbox it now. Box looks really bad, but there is another box inside. I ordered it from United Kingdom, so I don't need to pay tax and receive it in one week. On top of box is good quality manual and the box with dividing plate and accessories for it. In another box is really heavy and solid tail stock. There come mounting screws and accessories in bag. And finally there's rotary table with pre-installed flange and 80mm 4 jaw self-centering chuck, which I can use also on my mini lathe. Everything is tight packed into bags, so let's rid of them. If you bought a new phone or something, the moment of unboxing is one of best feeling, at least for me. But when you bought the new tools, well, it's not so nice. If you ever bought a new tools or machine, you know what I'm talking about. When the product is finished for sale, the producer protects them from rusting while wait on warehouse or during the transport. So they apply some coating on entire product. The coating is something between oil and grease, in short, very dirty, sticky coating. So first job on every machine I bought is to disassemble it, clean every part and then assemble it back together, with maximum setup accuracy. Every time I said better as it come from factory, because I can take time. Right after I clean it look much better. Then I put chuck and flange out of rotary table and clean them too. The rotary table just disassemble and clean then we will look some details. Ok, all parts are clean now. And here I got the base part of rotary table. It's cast iron with machining surface. There is center axis with worm inside, so we can move worm away from the table gear to rotate it freely. There are 8 screws to set the worm stiffness. And here's the table gear. Worm and gear got ratio 90 by 1, so if we turn worm for one circle, table rotate for 4 degree. This means 90 turns for full circle. Like on base mount also on table part is groove for oil. There are 4 T slots and more sconus too into table. One radial bearing on table and one axial bearing on other side under lock nut. With this nut we can set the stiffness between table and base part. I need few minutes to set it on position that the table still running nice and there is no free space. There are four different setup options. One of them is that nut to fit table on base part. Second is that nut to fit the center stiffness. Then there is another locking nut for set the warm axis stiffness into center. And the last one is that little screw which holds the final position of X center. That means how deep worm go into the gear tooth. So with it we can set the free space between worm and table gear. Ok, let's take a look on all parts a bit closer. Here's the great quality manual, nice color printer and very thick paper, so the manual can't damage too fast into workshop. There are a lot of pictures, exploded view, manual, how to center it, how to set up each part, parts number and of course dividing table to 100 divisions. For more than 100 divisions you must use formula to calculate it. There are also a bit of advertising for other products. Here I got 80mm 4 jaw self-centering chuck, which comes screwed to aluminium flange. Flange is so accurate that even if you unscrew it, the chuck won't fall off, you must pull it pretty hard to get it off the flange. But there's one fail, chuck K won't fit into hole, the only one K hole that the chuck got, so I need to mill K just a bit. Material of K is hardened, but with Vidya and mill there is no problem to cut a few micrometer of material. A bit grinding of edges and K fit perfect into chuck. Chuck is really tight to clamping, so I think it's a bit more accurate like my old 3 jaw chuck from Minilate. I can't feel any free space between jaws and chuck if I compare to my late chuck. Of course there's also outer jaws come with. Here I got the tail stock, as I say it's really rough and massive piece of steel. 
The base is just rough finished cast iron, other parts are grinding finished. There are two screws to set the height of it, one screw hold the live center so it can turn and one screw for tightening the live center. All together is massive, so we must tight hard the tightening screw that we can change the position of live center. On the setting wheel is just left handed treat to push live center out of tailstock. This little screw hold the wheel on its place, it's got about quarter turn of that bend. On first look the live center look from soft material, I know that's not right, but I try it with file. Yes, the escape part is from soft material. Here I got 3 dividing plates with different number of holes, from 15 to 49 holes. Make out of hard steel and nicely finished. Numbers are nicely sync and all holes got a bit cut attached from one side. This little brass equipment just help us find the right hole. We can set it in any position, so we don't need to count each hole every time. We'll see later how to use it. Anyway, it's nicely finished, maybe a bit too much because it's very hard to set even when the screw is untightened. Some manufacturer make this part plastic, but it won't be nice when the hot chip fly into. Screw for mounting the dividing plate is somewhere from 80s. I really don't see that kind of screw for a long time. If I talk about screws, just see that mounting screws and nuts. For a big mounting screw grey color are pretty good, but the four smaller black one for mounting the chuck on table are terrible. They are all metric version, M8, but just look the dimension of treat. It's about 7.5 mm, so it's normal that there is free space between nut and screw. I probably make it all new, also don't like that the screw easily unscrew from T-nut. If the screw is metric also nuts must be metric, but in Europe we use 13 mm K from M8 nut. In England look like they use 12 mm for M8 nut, but one of 8 nut is 13 mm, all other is 12 mm. All the screws come with is really bad, look like they use every trash they found on floor. Also that clamping accessories is not the best choice. There are no end finish at all and also the grue are not cut at parallel. There's also handle for dividing plate, with spring in it, so the pin lock into holes on dividing plate. That spring is really strong and you must pull out every time you make turns. I must make some blockers there to hold handle with pin out of holes while turning. The handle pin got a bit of conus on the end, so it fit nice into hole and hold the center in its best way. And finally there's rotary table, it's pretty heavy and solid. Table is nicely finished with a Morse conus 2 into center. There is two nipples to add oil into worm, shaft and between the base mount and table that grew we talked about before. But one of them didn't mount till the end and one of them is damaged, so some tiny chip can go into. Bottom is also grinding to nice finish. There are two screws to block the table. It worked great. You can tight it really gently and the table hold rock solid on its place. You can see their big dead bend. Well that was the situation before setup, right from the factory. Table turning really nice and smooth. I don't know how to tell but you got nice feeling in the handle. Until this happened. Another part I must to make new, with free turning handle. There's another screw to lock the extender. We just untight it and extender is free to move worm away from the gear. That means that we can rotate table freely, nice function which save us some turn or two. With extender we move entire worm axis and handle away from the table gear. This little screw is the limit for extender, that means how deep worm go into the gear teeth. Deeper it go more precise will be, but not too much, it become hard to turn and make damage on worm and gear. Ok, I will try to mount it now on my milling machine. But as you can see I can't mount it on vertical position because hole doesn't match to T slot on my table. I could mount it if I turn by 90 degree, but I want to mount like that, so I must make some middle part, but more about this in some other video. I'll just try to mount it horizontally. I think that mounting will be easy job, but I was wrong. There was no problem on one side, just insert T nuts, screw, washer and nut, no problem at all. But on other side, well, there's another story. Because there is really small place for a nut, but this is not the main problem. Every time I try to tighten the nut, it pushes screw out of grew. Why? Just look at that. I think they forgot to mill something here. On this place is only cast iron without any finishing, so there is a big angel due to the need for casting, so the nut can't clamp evenly. 
So I put entire rotary table into vice and milled the surface just that much to the got entire nut surface flat and parallel. After a minute I got nice result and mounted without problem. Until I meet another problem, of course. The wheel is much lower than a rotary table surface, so it's crashed into the case of limit switch for x-axis table support. Temporarily I just remove limit switches. This problem I solved with the plate for vertical position later. Ok, let's make some tests now. But first of all I will center the table to spindle. There's many ways I think, but I use just wrongly turned the drill into chuck and the MK2 live center from late tail stock. Then just use my eye to center, for first try it'd be more than enough. I got here a piece of aluminium and I want to make 180 degree radius on the end. So I must to clamp this piece into center also, accurate as possible, otherwise the radius will not be in center. This step is really important, if you don't clamp in center there was no way to fix with X and Y axis. I measured the part and marked the center off. Don't worry, it's my cheap caliper. When I got centered table to a mill I must center also the part on the table. I make this on simplest way, with a tiny drill bit. I put a piece of wood under the part, so I get some free space between table and machining part. Then just set the part to center and clamp it. After I got centering table and machining part I set digital readout to zero. Now insert end mill into milling machine and move any axis X or Y for half of diameter plus half of mill diameter out of center. So if I want to make 30 mm radius with 10 mm end mill I must move any axis 20 mm out of center. 50 mm is for half of diameter I want to make and 5 mm is for half of end mill diameter. When we got everything set up just start the machine and turn the table for 180 degree. Hey it cut like butter, no abrasion at all in turning table. The radius come out really nice, with a bit of offset, so I try another centering method. This is the part I use for project, so this time I just got one try to make radius into perfect center. This time I set the x axis offset before clamp the piece. After I got centering table into a spindle, I set the x axis for half of diameter out of center, in my case 15 mm. Then put wrong return at mill into chuck, close part to it and clamp, that's it. So the part just touching the mill, before I start milling I check also on other side. Looks good, so start milling. I can cut all at once, but there are no vibration at all. This time I got much better result. The radius start at touching point and end just a bit out of touching point on other side. That's good for me. There I got one more steel piece I need to cut radius on. This part got a hole in center of radius so centering will be easy job. When I got centering table to a spindle I take drill bit which fit into center hole. Clamp it into chuck and set it through hole. Then just clamp the part. That's it, easy job. Then install end mill and set the x axis out of center. When start milling just changing x axis position until you got the perfect radius. I make a bit too short part to get out entire radius, but it's centering good. Now I try to divide something. I mount the chuck on rotary table and install a dividing plate and handle. Then I clamp the random piece into chuck with diameter 16 mm. This time I make 10 by 10 mm 4 side shape on it. So I find the touch with the mill, then move x axis to cut 3 mm material away. When I cut all 4 sides there must be 10 mm square shape. After I cut one side for 3 mm I must turn the table for 90 degree. If I look on manual for 4 number divide, I must choose plate with 20 hole and make 22 complete turns and 10 out of 20 holes, so 22 and a half turns. After I turn the handle for 22 complete turns, I set the indicator to show me the space between 10 holes, so I don't need to count holes every time. Table is now turned for 90 degree, so I can cut the second side. 
Now move the indicator and again make 22 complete turns plus 10 holes. After repeat this step 4 times I got 10 mm square part with perfect 90 degree angel on top. On the other side I'll make the same thing, just that I divide on 6 side. Manual said that I can use any plate and just make 15 complete turns on it. After cutting all 6 side I got nice 10 mm hex head on top of round part. Ok, I think that's it. This is tool with a lot of functions, so we can just talk and talk there, but I just want to show the product and few examples of use. What can I say for the end? The rotary table is not bad quality at all, but that screw come with. Nah, I will not even comment that, but for just a dollar or two more, there will be much better first impression. On some other video I will make new mounting accessories and base plate to mount it vertical or horizontal, and also lift up a bit so the switch can go under the handle, and of course try to make some gear. Thanks for watching, like, share, subscribe if you like and see you next time.